Book of 2 Samuel, the sixth chapter. 2 Samuel, the sixth chapter. Really, when it all started out, there was actually four books of Kings. And later on, it was divided up into 1st and 2nd Samuel and 1st and 2nd Kings. And this is all the accounts, all the history. Just like in the New Testament, we have the book of Acts. How many thinks the book of Acts is right? The book of Acts is right. Everything's right. Yes. Amen. Well, it's right over here, too. But the thing about it is, I'm gonna, I just want to say that God wants everything done right. He wants it done in a specific way, and he's not going to accept anything that's not right. I don't care how much shouting, how much singing, how much the beat on the drum. I don't care. And we see the whole world full of it. Everybody's worshiping. They got all this worship music. They got all these shows on TV and everything. But I'm going to tell you what, God is not accepting that. That's right. If it's Amen. not done according to God's word, then God is not accepting that. Amen. And that's what I want to show you this morning with the help of the Lord. And we're going to read the sixth chapter of the book of Second uh, Samuel, sixth chapter, sixth chapter. And I'm going to read this. Start out where I find myself here. Everybody want to read with me? Anybody need a Bible? Because I'm going to go in and extend on this this morning. And, I, and everybody, you just got to get right in here. If you get tired, stand up. Stand up and raise your hands. Stretch. Don't get up and leave. Go outside and get rested up. Because then you're going to miss out on something. I don't want you to miss anything. All right. Let's talk about King David. I, first of all, I'd like to say that the Lord had uh, he had 12 tribes of Israel. They were the 12 sons of Jacob. All these men got an inheritance. 11 of those sons, when they went into the promised land, they got a portion of the land. That's where they, they got the name, the land of Judah, the land of Benjamin, the land of Issachar. They all got a portion of the promised land. But there's one tribe that didn't get a portion. Does anybody know who that is? The Levites. They didn't get no portion. Their portion was the Lord. And they took care of God's stuff. God ordained them and appointed them to take care of the tabernacle, to take care of the ark, to take care of all the stuff. The Levites... A lot of them, they took care of even the wood and the water and all that stuff. But then that one son that was Aaron's son was a Levite. All of his sons became priests. And all them priests and the Levites, they had to work. They took care of all the work in the tabernacle and in the tabernacle or in the temple as they went on. The other, the other 11, they brought their tithes and they brought their offerings to the house of God. And them offerings and them tithes is what took care of the Levites. It took care of their families. It took care of the offerings. It took care of the widows. That's, that's the way God set it up. God had that one people. They didn't own land. I think they had, I, I can't remember how many cities that God gave the Levites to dwell in. But they worked at their job. They had their job was working at the temple, working at the, in the tabernacle, doing the work of God. And uh, But we got to see that God ordained this. Everybody see that before we get started? He ordained that the Levites take care of the work of God. All right, chapter 6. Yeah. Wasn't there tabernacle in each one of the tribes? The Levites took care of it? No. That not a tabernacle, Why? but they had another name for it. The tabernacle was in one place. And all the Levites were there, but then there was Levites that was out. Three times a year, they all come to Jerusalem to worship. All the males that did, they come to worship. What's it called? It was a synagogue. They had like their own school or their own church, just like we do with the main tabernacle. It was in Jerusalem. But all the Levites, they was appointed to do the work of God. They was ordained to do it. There's a lot of people today that's not ordained to do stuff, and they can prove what they're not ordained to do by the things that they preach and teach because it's not according to the law. Okay, chapter 6. I got a lot, a lot of reading here I want to try to do this morning. 
And if you've got any questions or any comments or anything, everybody, you know, feel free to speak up and uh, speak real loud so everybody can hear you. Everybody hear me this morning? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hear me, Brother Barker? Hear me pretty good? Uh, I can hear a little bit. Well, won't you come up here and say by me? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, <laughs> I tell you what, I, I got us another computer and stuff back here. We're get get things hooked up here where we can have some more sound. Uh, all right, chapter 6. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel. 30,000. That's a lot of people with him. Yep. And David rose and went to all the people that were with him in Bailey of Judah to bring up, the, bring up thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubs. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, that it was in Gibeah, and Yuza, and, oh, and it, believe it or not, this is Ahio, Ahio, Ahio. The sons of Abinadab drove the new cart. All right, they took the ark, they put it on a new cart, and these two men here, they drove the cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which is in Gibeah, accompanying the ark of the God, and Ahio went before the ark. This guy, Abinadab, he was also a tribe of Levi. We'll find that out later. Okay. And David and all the house of Israel, now listen, it's all the house of Israel, played before the Lord on all manner of instruments, made of fir, wood, even on harps, and on palsaries, and on tambourines, and on cornets, and on cymbals. And when they and when they came to Nahon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it. For the oxen shook it, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his what? Error. Error. And there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased with the displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Yuza, and he called the name of the place, I don't know how to say that, Peresia, maybe, to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord to him and to the city of David. But David carried it aside into the house of Abedim. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Abedim, and the Gittites, three months, the Gittite, the three months, and the Lord blessed Abedim and all his household. And it was told the king, saying, Lord hath blessed the house of Abedim and all that pertaineth to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought the ark of God from the house of Edom unto the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they bare the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fattens. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with the linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked up there through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in a place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts, and he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women and the men, and every one a cake of bread and a piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed, every one to his house. And David returned to bless his house, and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came to out to meet him, meet David, and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who hath uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his, and of his servants, and as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. 
And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father, before all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, and over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be base in mine own sight. And the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore Micah, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. See, God closed up her womb. But the story, it goes on here. If we back up just a little bit, I'm going to read it all before I come back. But it all started out, God had appointed the Levites to take care of the ark. He had told them what they had to do. He told them that when they built the ark, how that they put, take four gold grains and they, they fasten to the ark on each corner, and how they'd take the shit and wood and they'd make shafts out of it, and they'd shove them through the rings, and the priest would pick up the ark, only the priests, and bear the ark on their shoulders and carry it. Well, David, he looked down here and he thought, well, we're just going to go down there and get the ark of God and bring it down here. First of all, he didn't get the priest to do it. He gathered 30,000 people. He gathered all the people round about. They were going to make a big show and a big party out of it. Everybody was playing music. Everybody was singing and dancing. And they said, we're moving the ark of God. And the ones that was in honor, no doubt, what, that really must have been some kind of a possession. And they was doing it for the Lord and honoring the Lord. But I just, isn't it something, how the right in the middle when everything was going on, that when a man, the, the old ark started squabbling on the wagon, one fellow just reached up to steady and God struck him dead. You know why God struck him dead? Well, he, wasn't supposed to touch it. he wasn't supposed to be touching that ark. They wasn't supposed to be carrying it. All the people wasn't so do, supposed to be doing it. And the thing about it is, there was a curse on them. Now the music was there, and the singing was there, and everybody was happy and singing and shouting and having a big time. They was doing it just like the world's doing it today. But God wasn't for that. He was right. against them. And he said it even came to a place when somebody touches the ark, they, they fell over dead. Right. Maybe this man didn't know any better. I don't know. But the thing about it is, he was told not, not to touch the ark, not to take hold on it. And, I, and as we go on down here, then David, you know, he takes it aside. And he puts it in Abedium's, or takes it from Abedium, he puts it in a, another man's threshing floor. And while that ark is there, his whole house starts to get blessed. I don't know how he was blessed, but I don't know, maybe he had a lot of crops, maybe God just flooded him with things, I don't know. But the thing about it is, David said, i got to figure out a way to get the ark up. But in the beginning, he didn't require the Lord anything. He just took it up on himself to do it. But when David come the second time, he come with sacrifice. He was he feared God. Just like us, the Bible said, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. When we come before the Lord, we should offer our sacrifice. It, it shouldn't be a light thing. Just use God as a crutch and pray when we need him. But we should come to him and we should honor him. We should come to him the best way we know how. Back there, God told them not to come empty-handed. You know, they always, when they come, when they travel to, to meet the priest or they travel to the house of the Lord, it says that they, they brought a gift and they brought it to the Lord. I mean, it was a serious thing. And But the thing about it is, David, he not only done that, he got him an ephod, which is an apron. You know, it's like a, a, an apron, a, you know, for to do divine things. In other words, he just didn't wear all his old T-shirt, his high state Buckeye shirt and all that stuff. Don't get mad at me, brother. I hate you, man. Amen. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm not saying you can't wear a, a T-shirt, but I'm just saying when you're doing God's work, when you're coming to the house of the Lord, we ought to, we ought to look like it. We're, we're serious Amen. about it. If I, if I go to a wedding, I dress up. If I go to a funeral, I dress up. And try, but usually when I come to the house of the Lord, I represent the church. I represent... All of you, I represent God, and I shouldn't be up here with an old ragged t-shirt. That's what the world wants you to do, just an old casual look. I know people say, well, God, don't care if you're poor. Well, you can still be clean, and you can still look nice, even if you're poor. You know, at the time we're living in, and I'll tell you what, if you don't have the stuff to wear, uh, we'll share our clothes. A lot of my suits down through the years, of course, I'm bigger than everybody now, so I have to hand mine down. I don't get too many handed down to me anymore. 
But the thing I'm trying to say, it's not what you wear, but it's how you present yourself. I mean, if, if, you, if you had a wedding, my granddaughter's going to have a wedding here this week. If I showed up in an old T-shirt that said uh, Apex or something on my work shirt, then, you know, that wouldn't be very representable, would it? I wouldn't be representing the church very well. So everything that we do, we represent the church. When we go pray for somebody, but everything, but when David, the first time it was just a big hoo ha and everybody went down there, and nobody wasn't in their place, nobody wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing. But then David realized, hey, this is a serious thing. I'm going to bring the ark of God. And I'll tell you what, when I go, now when I go, it says they took six steps. They took the ark six steps. And when they brought the ark, then David got out in front and they started offering up sacrifices. They started sacrificing unto the Lord. And I began to say, well, that'd be awful. He's killing sheep or oxen. Well, I'll tell you, when Solomon, when, that, when, they, when they offered, dedicated the house of the Lord, they offered sacrifice up in. He said it was a number. They couldn't even number what it was. Of thousands of oxen. Now they just didn't cut the meat up and burn it on the fire. They cooked the meat and they shared it. And they give everybody portions of it. That's like the offerings, the burnt offering, the trespass offering. The people brought them in. Them offerings was given to the priests for their food and what they eat. That's just like a priest used to take a flesh of it, like a fork, and he would reach in the pot. He would take out a piece of meat, and that was be, that would be his food. That's what he eat. And you know, I never thought about it. One time, I, I went up to my brother-in-law's. They had a church up in Springfield, and I was been go, going up there preaching. And I didn't. They used to give me some gas money or something, you know, whatever he gave me. That was fine. If he didn't have it, that was fine too. But I know one. I know one night he he told me he handed up, held up the offering basket to me after the offering, and he said, "Put your flash hook in there." And get what you need. And I'll tell you what, when he said that, that put a fear on me. Because that made me think about reaching in there, like the people today, they just reach in with both hands and get all they can. But he just put his hand up there, and I thought, boy, what he said, that's Bible. He we should we shouldn't take more than what's given to us. God will take care of us, and God don't want us to be greedy. And after that, I thought, you know, every time I take take something, I want to make sure that I use it for the right thing. Everybody with me so far? Yeah, chapter 7. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to chapter 7. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still covering this. And there's, you know, the Bible told Peter, he said, feed the flock. He said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Today, when this, after he'd done what God had told him to do, after they got the ark in place, after they offered the sacrifices, after they played the music and they sung and they shouted and then they danced, after that, he never sent the people away empty. You know who else didn't send the people away empty? Who turned up? Jesus. Who turned up? The fishes. Fed the 5,000. He didn't send them away without anything. You, if you're honest and you're coming to church and you're coming to worship, you're, you're going to have something to take home with you. You're not going to go home empty. But he gave them all something to go home. And he didn't say, hang around and have a party. He said, go home. Be with your families. Take what you've learned. What we've done for the Lord. I'll tell you what. We come here to worship God. We go out there to serve God. We live for God outside of the walls of the church. We serve the Lord. We worship the Lord when we come in here. We come here for instruction. You know, we come here to worship God and to praise God. And to offer up our sacrifice. Not just bring our offering. But the offering that you need to bring is yourself. Offering up, offering up yourself. And every time you come to the house of the Lord, the Lord looks at you and he sees all the suffering that you do. He sees all the tribulation that you do. And all the things that you suffer for his name's sake. He takes all that into account when we come before him. Did you ever wonder why God don't ask, answer a lot of prayers? Because people's not coming to him with their heart. They're not coming and asking. And they're not doing it in repentance. You know, every time they came before the Lord, they washed their self, they cleansed their self, and they come before the Lord clean. You remember the scripture said, lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. God wants us to come with a clean heart if we want something from it. Anybody got any questions? I covered a lot of stuff here, I know. I ain't gonna, I'm going to run out of time, I know. All right, go with me to uh, First Chronicles, chapter 13. If anybody's got any questions, now this is another, 
This is another account of this. I just read that one through because it didn't give no details or nothing. But now we're going to read it and we're going to, after you know the story, 1 Chronicles chapter 13. You might want to mark as we go along here because I'm going to, I'm going to touch a lot of things here. I'm actually going to be in chapter 13, chapter 15, and 1 Chronicles 16, 1 through 7. All right. Now, you remember the, the story I just told you about? Is there anybody got any questions about what we just talked about? All right. First, this is First Chronicles. He said, And David consulted with the captains of the thousands and hundreds and every leader. Now, see, he goes in. He's, he's just taking it. I'm going to get everything going here. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, notice what this Levites is everybody. If it seem good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto all our brethren, everywhere, that are left in all the land of Israel. And with them also the priests and Levites, which are in the cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us, and let us bring again the ark of our God to us. For we, listen, for we inquire not at it in the days of Saul. In other words, the, 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 the ark was with Saul in his day for a long time. But David went with, without the ark. Because he didn't require it. You know, he didn't inquire at it. And all the congregation said that they would do so. For the thing was right in the, in the eyes of what? All the people. It's right in the eyes of all the people. Sometimes you want to do things that everybody wants to do. The thing about it is, it was of God for him to bring the ark up. But he wasn't just to bring it any other way. He had to bring it up the way God told him to do. All right. But you're going to have to tell me here. Verse 3, and let us bring again the ark of God to us, for we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. And all the congregation said that we would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of the people. So David gathered all Israel together from Shihon, Shihor of Egypt, even unto the entering of Heman, and bring the ark of God from, I don't know that name. And David went up, and all Israel, and Bahala, that is, that same name. Let me see, Kurja Jiru. Kurja Jiru, which belongeth to Judah, and bring up the ark of God of the Lord that dwelleth between the cherubs, whose name is called on him. And they carried the ark in a what? How did God tell them to do? Somebody else had to do it, didn't they? So they, this was a brand new car. Maybe David had somebody build it up. Maybe one of his friends, now this is a speculation, maybe one of his friends, somebody that really was a good master builder, they built a brand new car. And they were going to put the ark of God on it, and that was how they was going to carry it. Out of the house of Abinadab, and Yuza and Ohio drove the car. And David and all Israel played before God, with all their might, now listen, it said all Israel did that. With all their might, with what? Singing. Singing. And with what? Harps. And with hosseries. And with what? Tambles. And with cymbals. And with trumpets. All kinds of music. And when they, now I'm telling you, they had the time here. And when they came into the threshing floor of Shidon, Yuza put forth his hand to the ark, to hold the ark, for the ox stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Yuza, Uzzah, and he smote him because he put his hand to the ark. 
and there he died before God. Now, you know, the first time I read this, I really felt sorry for this guy. Yeah. And I thought, Lord, he was just trying to stay the guard people from falling off of there. You know, why would you kill him? You know what? Creatures that don't know what they're doing, they're leaving people Same right in the, yeah, the wrath of God. Amen. And they don't know. Amen. You know, it's just like I was talking to the children this morning. If I just let the children around the church, they'd be writing on the walls, carving their name in the seats. I remember, I remember the old church we had, most of those old theater seats, and, and they, people would wrote all over the backs of chewing gum and stuff all over the bottom of them. And I'm thankful that we, that the, the ones here and the children that's here, they take care of the house of God. I don't even chew gum in the church. You know why I don't chew gum? Number one, you can't pray and chew gum. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Jesus, oh, I love you, Jesus. I've seen people, they all are doing that. Anybody ever seen that before? No. Well, you can't do that. I know that's, that's funny, but a lot of people do it, and they don't think nothing about it. But it takes away your concentration. And one time, Sister Garnet in the church, she brought a bunch of gum and candy and stuff in her pocketbook. And while that was in class or whatever, she came back and her whole pocket was full of ants and stuff like that. And I said, so if you bring this stuff inside the church, you're going to attract uh, them little criminals that crawl around all over the place. We just prayed for them here. Things is a lot different than they are now. But I'm just saying, I don't do it. I mean, I could take a piece of gun. There wouldn't be a thing wrong with it. And I could preach against it. But I don't do it because I ask the children not to do it. Because if you give the children gum and stuff in the church, it's going to be stuck on the seats. It's going to be out in the parking lot. And people's going to be stepping on it. And it's going to be, that's just what I'm saying. you got to look back at things. And all these years, I don't chew gum in church. I, I have a mint in my mouth sometimes because of my, my dry mouth and stuff like that. But, but I'm just saying, and I, I remember one time, I, years ago, I used to use this binocca spray. It's like a breast spray. And I always worried about when I was praying with people around the altar that my breath would stink and I'd hinder somebody. So I'd always, when I got ready to go up and pray, I'd put me a couple squirts of binocca. Well, other people started getting into the binocca too. And, that, and I, I remember when the altar called people's head to the altar, you could hear them lids going pss, 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 all over the church. Because people say that that's conscious about it. And that's just what I'm saying. All this stuff's funny. We do a lot of funny things. But the thing about it is, anything we can do to better the church and to better ourselves, better others, that's what we need to think about. Not just think about ourselves, but always think about other people. I just throw that in there for good measure. Amen. Where do I quit reading that, Brother Buck? Uh, Verse 10. I finished it up. Verse 11. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach. You know what a breach is? Makes a separation. Your pants you got on, my pants I got on, you know what they call you know why they call them breaches? It's because they're breached. There's a cup, you're one person here, but then when your legs go down, they're breached. And that made a division. No doubt there was people in the crowd that they was happy because they was bringing the ark. But when God struck somebody dead, probably a lot of people was left in confusion. They started saying, well, if you know, God wants us to move this ark, then why he would, why would he kill me? Right. If there's anything goes on and people can't understand it, people get discouraged. No doubt. And he had all Israel there. He had everybody there. And, they, and then they brought a breach. All right. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. There, wherefore, that place is called Perizah to this day. Listen. And David was afraid of God and said, saying, how shall I bring the ark of God home to me? You know, he asked God, he asked a question, didn't he? In other words, I'm not doing it right. I mean, if I've done this and God struck the one dead that's carrying it, then something's not right. I'm not doing something right. So I, how am I going to bring the ark to myself? And David brought not the ark home to himself, to the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obedian, the Gittite. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obedian 
in his house three months, and the Lord blessed the house of Abedion and all that he had. Now, the thing about this is the first time that he done this. He went and got it, and that wasn't God's will. He didn't do it right. So he got in trouble. So he says that he took it to Abedion's place, and that's where he left it at. And then he didn't get it up to his house. All right, now, 14th chapter, it talks about other things, okay? But when we get back into 15th chapter, it starts talking about this story again. It goes on and continues with it. Now, I would to God that when you go home, after we go through this today, and what I'm trying to show you, that when you, if you read this yourself, you'll really get something out of it. You'll really see how that we can't just do things the way we want to do it. We've got to do it the way God says. Right. All right? All right, chapter 15. 15. Chapter 15, we jump from 13 to 15. Verse 1. Anybody got any questions? Comments? And David made him houses in the city of David and prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for it a tent. Then David said, None ought to carry. Now listen to this. He didn't say this in the beginning, but he said, David said, None ought to carry the ark of God. But the Levites, for them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him for how long? Forever. Forever. Who was supposed to carry the ark? Yeah. Who was carrying it the first time? The guy died. If David had knew what God said, or if he took heed to it, that man might still be alive. I could, I could be the cause of somebody dying. If I don't preach the truth to people, right. if I don't preach what God shows me, I could cause people to die. People out there just tell people anything. I was sitting up way late this morning and reading, and I, this, it impressed on me how people send out these things and say, God's going to bless you. You know, you're going to, I don't know how many they send me, y'all said, you're going to get money and all this stuff. All you got to do is just copy this to your page and send it out to 20 more people. And when you do, God's going to bless you the next day with money. And I just put an article on there, and I just, I just told people, you know, this is lying. You're lying, to, and, and you're making God part of your life. You're telling people to give that on. You know, if I tell some, if somebody sends me something and tells me, now, this, you're going to get this money and stuff, and you're going to get a blessing from God, but if you don't send this, then you're not going to get a blessing from God. Or if you don't send this, you don't love the Lord. And the thing about this, a lot of people, out of fear, they'll go ahead and forward it on, send it to somebody else. It ain't nothing but a chain letter. Right. It ain't nothing but witchcraft. It's deceit. It's a thing of chance. You know, telling people if you do this, you're going to get something from the Lord. It ain't nowhere in the Bible where God ever told us to do that. He never told us to gamble and to play lottery and all that stuff. He never told us to do that stuff. Taking a chance, spending your money, blowing your money on a chance on something. If you're going to get something, you're going to work for it. God's going to bless you for it. But I'll tell you what, when people, they send them things to me all the time. And tell me that if I don't send them out, that I'm not going to get no blessing. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to get a blessing amen. because I've amen. obeyed the gospel. How I many say amen? amen? I've got a blessing coming because God loves me. And he said, if I obey the gospel, he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Well, that's another story. Let's go. Let's, let's go. All right. All right, verse 3. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem and to bring up the ark of the Lord into his place. Which he had prepared for it, and David was David assembled the children of Aaron and the Levites. Who was the children of Aaron? Anybody know? Who was the very first high priest? Remember who made the golden calf? Who made the golden calf? He was the first high priest, and his sons took over the priesthood. He had two sons. Aaron did. He had two sons that offered strange thought up on the up on the, the God's work, and God struck them dead. And you think how serious this is? And there's a lot of offering going on, and there's people offering up stuff to a strange fire. There's people sitting this morning in the churches in the strange fire, and strange fire is teaching them and preaching to them. And they're even praying to strange fire, and they don't know the difference because they don't know what this says right here. All of these people, go ahead. Uh, Speak loud. Wasn't Aaron's sons uh, doing all these things, taking bribes to, and he he knew it, but he let them get away. I mean, he, he didn't say nothing to them. Stop. That was Eli. Yeah. Yeah. Eli, he was, 
like the precept was handed down from son to family to family. Sure did. All right. For the fourth verse, I'm going to read the third verse again. And David gathered all the children to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to its place, which he had prepared for it. And David assembled the children of Aaron, he was the high priest, and the Levites, they was of that tribe. And it goes on down through here and it gives their names. And I'm not going to read all these names. Jerusalem, Joel, was a chief that goes on down. And we're going to go down to verse 11. All right, verse 11. And David called for Zadok. How many remember seeing Zadok in the Bible when you read it? Anybody remember reading Zadok? He was a priest. He had a lot of, he was, a, he was an honorable priest. And his sons, God really blessed his sons because they did what David, they followed David with all their heart. And Abathar, it said Zadok and Abathar, the priest. They, and he said, and for the Levites of Uriel, Aziah, and Joel, and Shimei, and Eliam, and Aminadab, and said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the what? <laughs> Levites. Sanctify yourselves. In other words, just don't do this thing lightly. Let's really... Let's sanctify ourselves. And both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel into the place that I have prepared for you. In other words, now he was doing it the right way. This is what he said in the 13th verse. Because, for because ye did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us. For that we sought him not after the what? Do order. God has got a due order to do something. In other words, God caused the breach because they wasn't doing it in due order. They wasn't doing it the way God said. And that's just what I'm saying. Everybody goes to church, everybody that's beating on drums and singing and praising God, if they're not doing it, if they're not approaching God with sacrificing, with prayer and with worship, then God's not accepting that. I don't care how good it sounds. I agree. Um, I know there's like there's a lot of singers. And there's a, go ahead. You know, a lot of people got a lot of definitions like strange. Speak real loud, brother. The way it says strange, like Solomon loved many strange women. But if I were to send somebody on the street that's a stranger, it means I don't know them. A strange fire is a worship that God doesn't recognize. That's right. You know, he said that God is a spirit. And they that worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. People don't realize that. They say, well, we're doing it for the Lord. But if we're going to do it for the Lord, we have to do it according to His Word. I mean, if I hire a carpenter, he can come and build me a house, but if it's not the blueprints that I give him to build by, he's built the wrong house. That's right. I mean, we've got to make sure we build the house the way God says, or we lay it in the land. That's right. I think it says in the book of Psalms, it said, uh, how's that scripture say? Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain to build it. So we've got to build it according to God's plan. And I'm just saying, this was the children of Israel. This was Abraham's seed. These people were God's chosen people. But they was doing things wrong, and God brought a breach between them because they wasn't doing it the right way. One man died because he wasn't doing it the way God said to do it. How many people are dying spiritually now because they're not doing it the way God said? What I'm saying here, David, the first time they just got a big hoorah and everybody just took up and put the arm up there and no doubt there's a singing and a playing and a going. But then God struck one of them dead. That ain't the way it's going. Just like today, everything's going in religion. It's all music. It's all entertainment. There's money in it. God's of money. Thousands, millions of dollars. In the whole world, you look at everybody, everybody's a Christian. Everybody will say on the internet, say, oh, I'm praying for you. Next, they'll be telling dirty jokes and cussing, and then they'll get on the side praying for them. They ain't going to do them no good to pray. Amen. Because if they're not offering the sacrifice, and that sacrifice is their self. The Bible said God, when he was talking about Jesus, he said, God heareth not sinners. They was talking about Jesus. In other words, they said, well, he don't do it, he don't do it the way we do it, so God hear, don't hear him. But Jesus went on to say that him that is a worshiper of God him God hears. If we worship God, 
to deal with our heart. You know the Bible said we ought to go with God as a spirit. John 4, 24 said God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That word truth has got a little T on it. Or that little uh, S, I'm sorry, the word spirit's got a little S. It's talking about their spirit. It's not talking about God's spirit. It's talking about our spirit. we got to come to God with our spirit. And we got to come to him in truth. So God ain't going to accept it. All right, where did I let off at? That's 14. Uh, 15, 14? Yeah, 14. All right, now listen. I'm going back up 13 again. Okay, Thank you, goodness, it's going fast. And because he did it not at the first, the Lord made, God made a breach upon us for that we sought not after him to do order. In other words, they didn't ask God how to do it. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their, how they carry it? I want to know that part. Sitting in somebody's barn said, we'll haul hay in there. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves there on. As Moses commanded according to the word of the Lord. They did it according to the word of the Lord. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren. Now listen to this. To appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music, palsies, and harps, and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice of the Lord. The Levites was the ones that were appointed to do that. Not everybody. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Joel, and his brother, and Asaph. How many seen that word before in the book of Psalms? Asaph. You ever seen that name? At the end of some of the Psalms? And it goes on to mention a bunch more names. And it goes on down. Verse 19, so the singers, Heman and Asaph and Ethan were appointed to sound with symbols of brass. And it goes on and brings a bunch more names. And it goes on down to 22. And Shenaniah, chief of the Levites, was for what? Song. He instructed about the song because he was what? Skillful. Do you think we ought to practice a song before we sing it? Sure, yeah. 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 I mean, a lot of times we just wing it. But the thing about it is what we should do, we should try to do the very best we can. When they would give these songs to people, they took them to the chief conductor or whatever they, what is it they call the singer? The lead? What's it called? Like a choir leader, or what they call it. The other name. Well, Maestro is over music. But anyway, they had somebody so that everybody could be together. There's always, God's always got something. It wasn't the people couldn't sing or worship, but they had the Levites. They had their own music. They had their own singers. They, when they come to worship God, there was somebody to do the work. God's got somebody now to do the work. All right, now listen. Because he's skillful. 23 he said, and Bereshia and Ekelah, what they were what? Doorkeepers. Doorkeepers for the ark. Now there was two in the front and two in the back. There was there were four of them. And I might get these names right. And Shibaniah, and Jehoshaphat, and Nathan Real, and Amasa, and Zechariah, Benaniah, Eliezer, the priest, notice the priest, did blow with trumpets before the ark of God. And, and Obedian, now listen, remember Obedian, they've got it. And Je Jehiah were the doorkeepers of the ark. They had, the ark was kept. Nobody got around that ark. Nobody was to go in there. Nobody was to be around it. Nobody was to touch it unless they was chosen of God. They had to be of the priesthood. All right? 
Verse 25, so David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the house of Abedium with what? With joy. I was happy about it now, wasn't it? When you do it God's way, you're going to be happy. And it came to pass when God helped the Levites that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, that they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. See, there was sacrifice going on. And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen, and the Levites that bear the ark and the singers, and Shenanai, the master of the song, with the singers, David also had of one an ephod of linen. In other words, he was dressed for the occasion. Thus all the children of Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with what? Yeah, yeah. This happened. And with the sound of the cornet, and with the trumpets, and with cymbals, and making the noise, with palsies, with harp. You know people said you have no music in the church. All they did here, did they? And it came to pass as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Micah, the daughter of Saul, looking out the window, saw King David dancing and played, and she despised him in her heart. All right, I'm going down to chapter 16. Anybody got any questions there? Do you think if you ever find that ark, they were looking for it, think if you ever find it? I don't know if they will, but I don't know. That old natural ark ain't with us no good now. We've got the Lord. He's our Lord now. All right, verse 16. I'm just verse. So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered what? Burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. And when David, you know what he said? Well, sir, you didn't work deed good all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when David had made an end of offering, the burnt offerings, and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the what? In the name of the Lord. And he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to everyone a loaf of bread, a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Now this Asaph is going to tell you he's the chief musician and if you read in a lot of the Psalms you'll see his name there. It's because he was the conductor of the one lead the singer. And Asaph, the chief and next to him Zechariah he goes on down and through them names and it said with Paul's trees, Harps, but Asaph made the sound of the cymbals. Verse 6 Ben and I also, and Jeremiah the priests, with trumpets continually before the ark of the covenant of God. Now listen to this. Then on that day, David delivered first this song to thank the Lord to the hand of Asaph and his brother. And if you start right there at the eighth verse, that's the 105th Psalm of David. It goes right on down through the rest of the chapter. So David was writing songs. He was praising God because he done it the way God said. But when he didn't do it, the way just like I had, I had more stuff here I was going to add to this this morning. But when we go to God, we got to do it the right way. That's right. we got to come to him with repentance. If you look at Daniel's prayer, when he prayed, when he started off his prayer, he started repenting for himself and for Israel before he ever inquired of the Lord. And we should always repent. Paul said, I die daily. Every day we should repent. When we come to the Lord, I tell the Lord all the time, Lord, forgive me for the things that I don't know that I did. Forgive me for the things that I'm, that I'm lacking. And you know what? He hears my prayer because he knows that I suffer for his name's sake. He knows that I'm living for him. Am I, am I perfect? No. I'm not where I want to be with the Lord, but I'm not where I was when I started. If I could have went on with this, you know, i got a couple more minutes. I'm going to read. Go to Luke chapter 5. I'm going to 
gonna give you some more stuff to read. So. I'm not gonna read it all. I'm just gonna tell you. Tell you Chapter five. This is what's called study. When you go through and you study. Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. Everybody with me? Yeah. Listen. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of lepers, who seeing Jesus fell upon his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Was he clean? Well, listen what the Lord told him. He said, And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according to as Moses commanded for a testify, for a testimony unto them. In other words, the Lord cleansed him and he forgave him, but there was still something he had to do. And if you go over in the 14th chapter of Leviticus, you can read this and read the whole chapter. You'll find out <coughs> that there had to be something done. When you went to the priest, you couldn't just, when you got back, even though the Lord made you clean, he couldn't just go back in town and say, well, I'm clean, even though he was, because he had to go and do what the Lord told him. When a leper was found with leprosy, he had to go and show himself to the priest. And the priest had to pronounce him clean or before he could ever be accepted back in among the congregation or accepted back in the house. And actually, when he met the priest and the priest saw that he was clean, he had to offer up a sacrifice for him. And, and when he offered up the sacrifice, he put him back into the camp for seven days. And then on the eighth day, he offered up another sacrifice for him. And then, and, until the priest knew for sure that the, the ceremony was that he took the blood and he put it on, on the tip of his ear and on the thumb of his right hand and on the, his big toe. You know what? If you put stuff on somebody's ear, something on their hand, and something on their toe, you'd look at that person up pretty good, wouldn't you? Yep. So the priest, him looking him over, and then after that, he, he offered again and he put oil upon him. Put it on his ear and on his thigh and on his toe. There was a ceremony that had to be done before the priest could say he's clean. Isn't there a ceremony now that's got to be done just like that? That first ceremony, he said he'd bring two, two, two little birds. And he'd say he'd take one bird and he'd kill that bird over running water in an earthen vessel, like a bowl or something. And he would catch the blood in that bowl. And then he would take the other live bird and dip it in the blood and let it go free. Can you see that in Jesus? Don't you think that he was the one that died for us and his blood was shed? That once we're dipped in that blood, we can go free. And that's what he, Jesus was showing him, that there has to be more. He couldn't get remission of sins because Jesus had never died yet. He couldn't be the lamb. That was to be offered up because he had never died yet. But after he died, then he told Peter, you don't have to offer up the lamb no more or the oxen, but you repent of your sins and you get baptized in my name for the remission of those sins, and then, you're, then you'll be free. And I'll tell you what, if you read these, if you see these parallels, and then even in that 14th chapter, give the law, what you've done for the natural man, and then it goes on for a poor man, well, how do you cleanse that man's house? And even how to go, and in the last part of the chapter, it tells you how they would cleanse the house. And the ceremony and the offerings and all them things was a shadow of things to come. That Christ came and he done away with all those things. I know I'll give you a lot of stuff this morning. Sorry. Amen. Give you a whole thing. But the thing about this, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope it will give you something to think about. I mean, this, you get.